Um, yeah, cool. <coughs> one last cough before you record. Is it clear? Get the black blow, pop. <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> Cool. Right. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. I'm Scott and across from me is Callum. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing? I'm, yeah, not doing too bad, mate. Yeah, yeah. not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. How's your week been? Uh, how's the week been? Um, yeah, sort of same shit, different day, really, to be honest. Yeah, still. It's always good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, at least it's consistent. <laughs> the, the benefits of monotony. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Probably the only benefit of monotony yeah. is the consistency of yeah, it. Yeah, tell me about it. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, I've, I've, sadly, I've got nothing overly exciting to uh, report other than that I've been, you know, Grateful for, you know, having this again as a, you know, sort of a, an escape. Get and, you out uh, those four walls, eh? Yeah, just being able to, yeah, kind of read up on stuff and, you know, learn something new and, yeah, look into some pretty uh, intriguing sort of uh, mm. information. I started it a little later than usual, admittedly, but, uh, yeah, it was... <laughs> it was uh, right. I'm sure you'll be forgiven. Exactly, yeah. It was, uh, you know, an escape nonetheless, so... Um, but yeah, otherwise not uh, not too bad. What about yourself? Um, yeah, yeah, pretty much the same sort of thing. Um, working inside the M25 again, which is always a wonder. Lovely. Oh, the, the <laughs> sights and uh, sounds you hear and see in there, mate, believe me. Yeah, I can only imagine. Good bloody grief. <laughs> but um, yeah, the next week though, as in tomorrow, it's going to yes. be quite interesting. Go on. Starting a new job. Oh, yeah, okay. So on a new site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a funeral home. Wow, okay. And that's quite apt, an considering active, what we're talking about. An active funeral home. <laughs> active, yeah, wow. Yeah, cold store and... Shit. People getting ready for burial and, and the such. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, so Look good. forward to those stories then. <laughs> my, <laughs> the little whispers my or governor the little and, taps. And my lad are already shitting themselves. They're already getting like... Ooh, ooh. I mean, <laughs> as, as much as, you know, I'm sure, you know, you've got to be respectful oh, of course we'd always promote that yeah it's, it's not like there I'm is go also go, hi i was gonna say there is also an opportunity to scare the shit out of them oh yes there is which you have to take oh no, believe me even if you like put your phone somewhere and play like creepy voices or something That's knowing yeah <laughs> yeah yeah Kieran. yeah exactly yeah Kieran. exactly all of that you've got to do it you've got to do it <laughs> oh yeah, I'm going to have so much fun. I I'm mean, it's a, it's a short week for me um, because we've got the, the double bank. bank yeah, we have. Yeah, you know, for our old Liz. Yeah, um, not short for Elizabeth. It's short for Lizard. We all Lizard. Know this. <laughs> yeah, Fraulein Lizard. <laughs> Fraulein Lizard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we may be touching on rete- reptilians in a couple of episodes. We never know. Yeah, so who knows? <laughs> we, well, oh, we may disappear. Or we'll be after shut that. down by then. Yeah, after that comment, we'll probably be <laughs> yeah. gone. So yeah, yeah, but that's for another time. Absolutely. Um, but for this time round, we are looking at demon possession and, we will be. by extension, exorcisms. Yes, we will be. Mm. Yeah. And I came across this um, this book. It's called uh, The Dark Sacrament, and it's by David M. Kiley and Christina McKenna. Okay. And it's, it's, it's an interesting read. It's the true stories of modern-day demon possession and mm. exorcisms. Yeah. And it mostly details um, two particular canons. So I, I believe a canon is the, uh, the correct terminology for an exorcist. Right. So for the person that actually comes along and, and performs the, the, the rite. Right, okay. The ritual. Yeah, yeah. And this this book came about seemingly because of um, Christina McKenna's childhood experiences. Um, mm. It seems like she in particular had um, experiences with poltergeists, poltergeist activity, which seemingly started off, you know, quite quite little, but just as like little tappings and things like this. Right. And, I should clarify as well, it's actually her younger brother that was experiencing it and she was just, you know, part of part of the rest of it. Like, so, okay. Um, she has three brothers and five sisters. So small family. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, and <laughs> believe it or not, they grew up Catholic. So Well, I never. Well, I never, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> 
And yeah, like I say, it, it starts off with um, just general tapping around the bedroom, and it bene- and it started beneath like a big oak wardrobe that they had, and then eventually it settled underneath the bed. Right, and then the tapping was growing to like like scratching sort of sounds and, mm. and clawing, as if like something was clawing underneath the mattress. Okay. You know, real Freddy Krueger style yeah, sort yeah. of thing. Um, and then like with a lot of poltergeist activity that, that you hear of, it progresses and it started to like hammering on the walls and the doors and, and things like this. And it got quite overwhelming for them all. Right. But it all seemed to be centred around her younger brother. For and sure. basically what happened was that you know, it, it then started following them about. So he wasn't able to go to school because he was experiencing things at school and he's becoming a bit agoraphobic. Right. Um, now, the the term poltergeist actually does mean noisy spirit. So, okay. Which makes, makes sense, sense doesn't yeah. it, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, quite accurate. Yeah, like I say, it introduces itself by just general knocking, but it get, eventually gets louder and louder and louder. Right. And... Basically, the question that the questions that she asks in this is that she often wondered about the nature of like the spectral universe and how exorcists can wield power of the universe in order to cast these things out. Mm. And she asks, what manner of entities live there in this other world? Yeah. Why do they sometimes intrude upon this one, the right. one that we exist within? Yeah. And what exactly does an exorcist do? Like, why are some individuals a target of paranormal phenomena and others are not? Right. That's an interesting one. It is, yeah. Um, is it all part of God's plan, she asks, or do we draw some things to us through our goodness or our wickedness, our ignorance, or unresolved issues of our ancestral past? Now, that's one that yeah, that's comes one that's up quite, yeah. um, quite a lot, the ancestral past. Yeah. You know, the whole ghost coming back to get you sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But so the the history of um, of exorcisms and the such, I mean, did mm. you find anything in particular on like the histories of, of it at all? I did. Um, and obviously quite a fair bit, but yeah, as we discussed pre-recording, mm. <laughs> I, I was going to save that for, I yeah, suppose, spoiler were. alert. Spoiler alert. What is going to be another episode. What is going to be part two of gotcha. uh, of this subject? But yeah, okay. it was uh, yeah, kind of a little bit on the whys and wherefores, and you know, kind of the the, the history and and why it was kind of brought into prominence and, and that kind of thing. You might be surprised at the uh, the origins of it of how old this mm. sort of thinking is, like mm. the the idea of demonology and, and exorcisms as a as a ritual, yeah, like the casting out of a spirit or mm. what we now call in modern day a demon. Yes. Um, it's actually the first, one of the first, or maybe possibly the earliest, is actually recorded in Sanskrit. Oh, right. And it's one of the, the many Hindu Vedas. I mean, mm. there's thousands of Vedas out there that, that, that have mm. been discovered. And this particular one, the, um, now I'm going to try and pronounce this. Go on. <laughs> Arthur Va- Veda. Arthur Veda. Right, okay. I believe that's correct. But there's about 6,000 verses in this particular Veda mm. itself. And it was written at some time around about three and a half thousand to four thousand two hundred years ago. Oh wow! So that's a long old time. It is a long old time to, yeah. have, to have existed. Yeah, yeah. And basically, it 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 follows the story of uh, Arthavan, who is said to be the son of a lord of the Lord Brahma, the the chief of the Hindu gods. Right. Okay. And in this Veda, it it, it describes um, two different classes of priest. Now, the, the regular sort of priests that would, you know, be the ones that, pe- that would do like the regular everyday rituals or mass yeah. in, you know, in a more modern speaking. Yeah. And then there was another class that was called the Angiras and they were tasked with sorcery and mm. exorcism. Okay. Now, the, the actual details of the exorcisms aren't in the Veda. So right. the ri- rituals or the rites that were performed aren't detailed at all. However, it does show that there was like evil spirits. So it like relates. So it spirit. relates to the practice, but it doesn't go into what that practice entailed. Exactly. It was more so to do with like, okay, like the, uh, this evil spirit has been expelled from this place or this, right, this person. Okay. So that suggested it, but didn't. But that's go all into you much. need to know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. need to know, and you don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't need to know about that part yet. <laughs> yeah. Not quite yet. Yeah, makes sense. And. 
so that it, it starts off uh, and actually what's what's quite interesting as well the rituals or as they refer to them in the vedas as charms um they, they use them for all manner of purposes encouraging um the growth of hair okay. or which is something I could do with. I was say, yeah, yeah, we, I know you're not that. possessed. You know, <laughs> boiled, boiled egg on, on top of these shoulders. <laughs> Follically challenged is the, is the term Follically I like to challenged. use. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, or they cure in leprosy with these, uh, with these same uh, charms or rites. And one such charm was used to exercise um, and drive out classes of demons known as the Rakshas and Pisakas. Okay. Do you remember those? They came up in our in our vampire episode. I've got to be honest, no. No? That's not ringing a bell, man. No. Is it not? No. I'm sure it came up in our vampire episode. Is it vampire? Maybe gargles, possibly. I can't remember. Say again? The Rakshas and Pisakas. Or Pisakas. No, man. No, no I've drawn a blank on that then, one. Yeah. I have slept since then. Check your comment what I did yesterday. <laughs> You're joking. Venera was asking you how your week was. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. In truth, I don't know. <laughs> well, in the Babylonians of, of, of Mesopotamia, which um, they existed around 1900 to 500 years BC. Yeah. Um, magic was actually practiced by a priest sect called the Asipu. Mm. And they used... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're right. I'm a child, yeah. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Oh, it's the poo. I see poo. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's what I said. I'm a child. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Hey, look, you ask. Yeah. I'll do that. <laughs> it was just the... That'll teach you. It was just the... <laughs> <laughs> of laughter. Oh, fuck's sake. Sorry. All right, no worries. <laughs> We'll get back to being adults. Is it? Well, we'll try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the Asipu, not Asipu, the Asipu. <laughs> <laughs> They'd use um, different forms of like hypnosis and right. um, other forms of rituals that we probably would have considered as magic. Yeah. Um, and these included casting out troublesome spirits. Okay. So now the Christian de- Christian uh, <laughs> theology. Need to expel this demon. There's going to be a few references to that film, guys. <laughs> yeah. be a few no references to uh, Scary Movie 2. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Fuck this. Fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, what oh, film? I know. I, I couldn't help it. As I was reading this book and a couple of different um, stories that were coming up, all I could kept thinking about was James Wood's yeah, that's, that's all I can Whenever I read these and I just, you know, you read about a, a priest doing an exorcism, all I see is James Woods walking in <laughs> and being like, fuck this. Yeah. Oh, just a bit where, we go, where she goes, she's been so unresponsive, she won't even touch me. And he goes, yeah, sometimes you've got to give them candy. <laughs> oh, it's, you wouldn't get away with that in this no. day and age, but oh, it's God, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, oh, so just, sorry. just a fair warning to... Yeah. Uh, all those uh, fair weather listeners. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. We will be uh, re- referring yeah. to Scary Movie 2. Yeah, fair quite a lot. Yeah, buckle in. Yeah. <laughs> so back to uh, the Babylonians. Yes, sorry. Go on. So, that's all right. So um, Christian demonology actually has a lot of basis in the Babylonian beliefs. Now, right. um, there was another group called the Assyrians. Okay. Now, there was they had like, their, their, uh, like official sort of religion among the priesthood and... and, and and such, and the the uh, the people of uh, people of worship, and in this book they refer to it as the underground religion that was the forerunner to European sorcery and magic. Now, okay. I don't know. I, this made me think of our second episode that we did, in which okay. I went into the details about serpent worship, okay, and everything else, and and fire and serpents yep. and, and everything else, and how they worship these things, and how they had an understanding that. Um, there wasn't just like one true God, so, so to speak, but there was lots of different things that you could actually, there was a pantheon of different things. Right, However, okay. the one thing that they did believe, the Assyrians in particular, they had the basis of what we now call Satan or the devil. Yeah. In that it was a principal demon or devil who ruled over a vast hierarchy of lesser evil spirits. Yeah, both so, the fallen angels. 
Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Was, that was the that was the sort of thing that they were yeah. that they were going on about. And so the history of it, I didn't realise it went that far back with it all. Well, no, and, and I guess I'm. I suppose I'm dropping a couple of breadcrumbs from the research that I was saving for next time. But um, interestingly, <clears throat> and quite typically, it was actually the um, from what I've found. You know, thus far, it was actually, you know, Christianity that actually introduced it as demon possession. Prior to that, it was only referred to as spiritual possession Mm. in the sense that it could be beneficial or it could be good, you know, to be possessed by a spirit. And as you were referring to earlier, of a loved one or a, you know, past relative or even a past life, you know, that kind of thing. Um, But, you know, as always with these types of things, the Christians saw an opportunity to, <laughs> you know, kind of use it to their advantage. And yeah. that's when they introduced the whole idea of it being demon yeah. um, possession. Well, this so, was what, something that was quite interesting. It's just really like come to mind as well, was that the idea of there being like a second um, soul within you. Mm. Um, and the ancient Greeks had an understanding. They called it a demon as yeah. well, but it was spelt D-A-E-M-O-N. So there was an ex- yeah. there was an A in there, <clears throat> excuse me, and it was not necessarily a negative thing, but it was something that was almost like a, I suppose, like a Jiminy Cricket, like a, a conscience, you know. So the I guess the old idea of you know you got the angel on your right, you de- the devil on the left, the di- yeah. you know the duality that is all within all of us, yeah. Um, that maybe the the ancient Greeks had an understanding that that duality was literally another entity that was part of you, almost like um, yeah. like a guiding or guardian yeah. spirit. Guardian angels, guardian spirit of, uh, yeah, and you add, yeah, the, sort of the good and evil, the, yeah, the duality of mm. it, yeah. It yeah. seems to be, yeah, it's, I mean, it seems to be a belief, but that's a belief that spreads a, across a, a, a whole number of, like, cultures and, mm. you know, territories around the world, um, which was actually quite surprising with how many there are yeah. around the world that have such a strong belief in possession yeah, uh, and you know, and, and spirituality and, and whatnot, but each one has its own interpretation of what that means, you know, to them. Yes. Which is, um, yeah, it's really quite fascinating. And which some cultures as well, and religions, it? I didn't even, I wouldn't even have thought or would have attributed to stuff like possession and you know, demonology and mm. all that kind of thing. But yeah, these are all breadcrumbs for next time. Well, yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. I mean, but, yeah, yeah, without going too jumping much the gun into a little that, bit, we are yeah. jumping the gun a little bit, but yeah. I, well, that was something that I found very interesting as well, was that all of these various different cultures have a different understanding, but, and because the intention is different. It is, yeah, definitely. And the more that I'm looking into these more uh, preternatural or like spiritual sort of um, topics that we look at, yeah, the more and more I'm realising that intention means a lot i mean even down yeah. to even down to the way we speak and the way we interact with other people context in particular yeah, yeah. means a lot context mm. and your intention in in what you're in saying what you're saying yeah so like that, the, one of the big main issues of today is digital communication so oh yeah when you've got like text messages and stuff like that you can't put intention and context so much yeah. into those words because it's lost in translation and oh, completely. Yeah, misunderstood misread you know, all that. Yeah. I mean, it just breaks down communication so much. <laughs> it creates division. Yeah, but it's something it? that everyone is reliant on so much. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's well, weird. you do get a lot of the, the so-called religious nuts mm. that say that all this technology is the the division created by the devil, which is I mean, quite an interesting I mean, it's, one. it's a division for sure. I don't know if it's necessarily <laughs> the, the devil. <laughs> like, well, Mrs. Boche, whatever you the believe. Devil. But, the devil. The <laughs> devil. Um, I mean, they've, they've but, got, I think they've got a point to an extent in terms of, again, yeah. the intention of what they're saying, in terms of who created it. I think that's, <laughs> yeah, that's neither here nor there. No, but, no. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I must say, I do like the old Monster Can presentation. That is that is great. <laughs> right, okay. Have you seen that one? No. Oh, I have to send it to you. It's great. Yeah, I have to it's, send it. Yeah, yeah this, uh, um, this, this Christian woman is demonstrating all the symbology that there is on the monster can and like, Oh, that one. I've yeah. Seen. That yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking, yeah. You know, the one it's got the, about. like the, the M shape and she breaks down the, the different the Hebrew the six. Yeah. 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 You know, so it's six, six, six. And yeah, yeah, you know, I've seen that, cross yeah. and you turn it up, it becomes inverted. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, clutching at straws. It's interesting. Yeah. It's quite funny. It was funny. Yeah. yeah. It was. But, no, I have seen that though. But also, yeah. but also the devil's greatest trick was yeah. to convince you he wasn't real. 
Indeed. Mm. I like that. Mm. I like that. It was almost a good sign off. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I shared that. It? Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save that for next time. So, yeah, my hopefully off. everyone will forget. Yeah. Yeah, let's hope so. <laughs> but yeah, so obviously we can't mention exorcisms and things like that yeah. without mentioning probably the most famous modern day case it's of an exorcism. Definitely one of, and I think from what I can see, it was probably the first that was popularised from true events mm. or, you know, from a true story. Obviously we had the exorcist before that, but that's ultimately fictional. It um, was, it was based it, on a, on a real it was demon from case. An, yeah. It was the, 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 uh, the story was, was drawn from uh, an article mm. um, that the author of the original book had, had read um, right, some yeah. years before writing the story. So yeah, so there's an element of, of truth in terms of kind of what happened to kind of the young girl, but the, I'm pretty sure the characters and everything else is fictional, but yeah, the, the, oh, the yeah, source material. Yeah, they'd have to change the names and such. But, um, but yeah, in, in terms of th- th- this actually happening to a living sort of person, this this story is, I think, one of the first. And it, it certainly popularised the the kind of the genre because there have been a whole spat of films kind of following on from this that are all based on yeah, demon possession or or, or spiritual possession of. Uh, of some sort. Seen plenty of them. I've seen enough of them. Yeah, Christ, yeah. Um, so yeah, he gets involved. In he, yeah, he pops up. Yeah, yeah, he had a cameo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so and yeah, as you say, you can't talk about demon possessions really without talking about Hollywood and the, the films that have been you know, created mm. off the back of these, you know, true stories. And, and this one that I'm gonna um, kind of go through. Um, is the story of um, Anna Elizabeth Michelle, or Annalise Michelle, as she was also known. Um, and her story was adapted for the film The Exorcism of Emily Rose, mm-hmm. um, which is quite a good film. It's a really fair. good film. Yeah. It's a pretty, really good one, film. One of, the, one of the better ones, I guess, but I think that's probably because it was also one of the first. <laughs> so it wasn't regurgitating anything, yeah. you know, anything sort of else, really. Um, but uh, for those that don't know, she was a, a German woman... Uh, born in 1952 um, and was famously subjected to 67 exorcisms in the last year of her, of her life. Fuck. Which was, yeah, which is brutal. <laughs> uh, especially when we find out how long they lasted and how yeah. many of them a week she had. Um, but es- essentially she died of um, malnutrition um, and her parents and the priest that they consulted um, were all convicted of negligent homicide. Um Anna had also been diagnosed um, with temporal lobe epilepsy, um, which will cause um, recurring and unprovoked seizures, mm. which is kind of what led to the belief that she was demonically possessed. Yeah, <laughs> um, which is which is the the idea of these epileptic like seizures that comes up a lot with mm. that comes up in, in yeah. these. In, in a lot of the stories on this, there's about, yeah. there's ten stories in this, right? And okay. I think out, I think there's eight of them, eight of them that have epileptic seizures. Uh, epilepsy, right? Okay. Um, so sh- shortly after the epilepsy diagnosis, um, she was also diagnosed with depression and started receiving psychiatric treatment. Uh, she was 16 years old when this all started, so pretty, still pretty young. Mm. Um, Um, And it's worth noting that Anna was born into a very strict Roman Catholic family. Um, I think her dad was a a priest. um, And I think two of her aunts were were nuns. That's right, yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah, She had had very close connections with the church. They'd go to mass every Sunday and all of that gubbins. So, yeah, she was. they they were quite well involved. Um, So, yeah, so this all started at the age of 16. But by the time she reached 20, um, Anna had become intolerant to religious objects like uh, sort of the crucifix and, and things like that, mm. uh, which is what they also used as a way to try and um, like heal her. And um, and also like uh, holy water and stuff like that. It just stopped having an effect as what her parents would believe. Um, but she also began to hear voices. Now, despite many medications, um, her condition worsened and she became suicidal. 
Um, after five years of said medications, um, which basically didn't work, um, Anna and her family um, became convinced that at this point she was um, possessed by a, a demon. Mm. Um, now, as a result of this, her parents appealed to their Catholic church for an exorcism. While rejected at first, uh, two priests were granted permission by a local bishop in 1975. Um, she didn't try so and bite him, did she? Just, yeah, no, that way it doesn't say that, no. <laughs> but I wouldn't put it past her. Um, yeah, this was, yeah. Um, no one she must have bishop. been, yeah, she must have been 18, 18 or 20 at this point. Um, Anna's parents basically stopped consulting with medical doctors uh, because the medications weren't working as they saw it um, and instead um, started a, a treatment of nothing but um, exorcism sessions. Um, the medications that she was given after her third seizure started to create other symptoms, including schizophrenia and bouts of delusion. Um, she would claim to also see um, devil faces during the day, like in the walls or in, in other um, objects. And this was during the day. Um, whilst she was praying, um, she would also claim to uh, hallucinate uh, hearing voices um, that would tell her that she would either rot in hell or that she was damned. And this is from her own sort of her own. admission. Yeah, yeah. So this her, is her own, own account. account. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the priest, um, Ernst Alt, um, upon seeing Anna, declared that uh, she didn't look like an epileptic and that he didn't see her having seizures. <laughs> Which is, which is helpful. Yeah, you it, don't, you don't look like an epileptic, do you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, okay. I guess yeah. you don't that's, know that's helpful. what uh, an epileptic looks like. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think they have a look, do they? Because it's not <laughs> a physical... Unless they're going through the throes of it all. You don't, yeah, at the time. Yeah, exactly, know. yeah. Um, and it was him who urged for the um, exorcism initially to take place. So he was the, the priest that her parents uh, initially approached. Um, Anna actually wrote a letter to um, the priest saying... And this is quoting it. Yeah, go for it. I am nothing. Everything about me is vanity. What should I do? I have to improve. Pray for me. And that was, that was yeah. it. Yeah. Which is pretty messed up. But for, well, for any age, but for a young girl going through all that, yeah. to, to write something like that, that's, that's also showing quite a troubled... But yeah, it's also it a cry is. for help, I think, as well, well as well, oddly enough, disturbing. That's, that's the sort of belief that, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, that the Buddhist monks have that everything that you are is just an idea. That mm. actually you don't you as a and a thing a being yeah. a being don't exist. Mm. So to think that you do, it is just vanity and you need to, yeah. you need to lose that vanity in order to reach enlightenment. Yeah. So, and, and interestingly, Buddhism do have a belief in, in spiritual uh, possession and, yes. and demonic. So yeah, that would make, that would make sense. Interestingly in her story, there's no, obviously because she's a strict Catholic, so there's no mention of her necessarily, you know, taking an interest in, in Buddhism in that respect. Oh no, no. But, but yeah, that meaning, there yeah, certainly, there certainly are. Um, what do they call them? Um, overlaps yeah, in a it, lot of yeah. different religions oh, absolutely, yeah. and such. So, absolutely, it, yeah. Like for instance, obviously, Buddhism is much, much older than mm. than Catholicism it, by by a long by a stretch. Lot. Yeah, yeah. So, the idea that, that certain beliefs can actually mm. seep over into new things. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we discussed that in episode two of this season, you know, the, yeah, yeah. the, the old Eucharist and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, those, the, the Holy Communion and everything is... It, yeah, people travel the, and... Long before Christianity and Catholicism, yeah. people were doing that. They take their stories with them, don't they? So Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, so in September of 75, um, Bishop Joseph Stangl, Stangl um, granted the priest um, Arnold Renz uh, permission to... Um, exercise um but had to keep it a total secret yeah of course yeah mm. Mm. if it works and you're trying to help the girl why would you need to keep it secret mm. 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 Yeah, <laughs> i don't know it's a hard that's mm. that's that is from i know the perspective you're coming from with that one <laughs> but but 
Because it's bollocks. Know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I knew that's where you were coming from. Utter nonsense is utter the correct Utter nonsense. The correct, yeah, term, the correct there, term, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's utter, utter nonsense. nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, no, I can understand that to a certain degree, but also because of, there is a stigma surrounding it. You know, yeah, no, there, there is there that really as is well. There's a yeah. huge yeah. stigma surrounding the idea. Not, not of, so much then, but funnily enough, following her case, there was a real stigma. Oh, and yeah, and the, the number of exorcisms that were actually allowed were greatly reduced following this. Um, which is interesting, but yeah, no. You, well, the Catholic Church has enough issues with, in other places, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got enough problems with kids without uh, exorcisms as well. <laughs> say allegedly, no say no more. Allegedly, allegedly. allegedly. <laughs> that well documented cases. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm just for our protection. I'm saying allegedly. <laughs> um, now, <clears throat> this is where it gets. Um, you know, just following on from what we were saying about the the harshness of it, but um, Anna would have one or two exorcisms each week lasting up to four hours. Um, and they were performed over a 10-month period between 1975 and 1976. Um, wow. You know, and I'm sure you've seen all the over-enthusiastic priests on, uh, specifically from the States, <laughs> you know, and, and like old... Uh, all the televangelists. Yeah, all of that. So if you imagine that... Or Kenny Copeland. Or Kenny, yeah, so you imagine him, four hours... Four hours at a time, twice well, he, a week. I tell you, he was trying to yeah. exercise COVID nineteen out of the whole of the United States. Well, exactly, yeah. So if you, you imagine know. what this poor girl would have gone through, he like, was calling for a supernatural heat wave. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> exactly. We've like, you know, that. So there were, the, I think, there were two priests and her parents, and they would like restrain her if she would like mm. fought against it. And yeah, he was um, like, it's brutal, man. Yeah, he's brutal. But um, yeah, sadly, on July the first, nineteen seventy six. Um, Anna died at home from malnutrition and dehydration. Um, and at the time of her death, she only weighed 60 pounds. Wow. Um, and she had broken both her knees from the constant kneeling down during the um, exorcisms. Yeah, because there was they, they detail that in the film itself, mm. the bit where uh, she starts kneeling down to pray and then it gets yanked up. Yeah, well, this was the... down, yanked and yeah. like slamming her knees onto the floor. Well, this, yeah, this was the thing. Over. Yeah, she was unable to move without assistance mm. because of the fact that she'd broken her knees. Um, and they think that she'd actually also contracted pneumonia like as yeah. well. So she really went through Viral it. Viral pneumonia or something mm. like that. Yeah, so really went through it, poor thing, yeah. Um, it was later determined at the sentencing um, of the parents and the uh, the priest that Anna's death could have been prevented up to as much as a week before she died. Wow. Like that's how kind of savable she was mm. physically, I guess. Yeah. Like she would have had a hard the recovery. The trauma that she went through mentally, I don't think she ever would have recovered from that, but physically mm. she could have been saved up to a week before she actually uh, like died. So it was, yeah, complete negligence on the part of the, the parents and the, the, the church, really, that mm. that, uh, that that happened. But um, interestingly, and this is just, yeah, this is where the whole um, utter nonsense <laughs> thing comes in. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, not, not so much regarding what she went through. That's, that's very much true, but the, more the religious side of it for me. Um, gotcha. The parents' lawyer... Was, was sponsored by the church. Yep. Uh, the priests uh, were only fined and the parents were spared jail as they had already suffered enough. Mm-hmm. <sighs> um, <laughs> during, the, during the trial um, in 1978, uh, doctors testified that Anna wasn't possessed, but instead claimed that she suffered from a psychological state because of the strict religious upbringing and her epilepsy. And I yeah, suppose as a slight they, result, they the depression as they well. They called it something, if I'm right, because I remember reading this after mm. I watched the film, yeah. The Exorcism of, mm. of Emily Rose, and I did read up on this case. I believe they called it something along the lines of psychotic epilepsy or something like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's more or less what they say here, but yeah, they, they didn't, I didn't read a specific name, but yeah, it's basically the psych- psychological trauma mm. that she went through, including the depression and schizophrenia mixed with the epilepsy. So yeah, it could easily have been a psychological epilepsy of some description. Yeah, yeah. I didn't read a name yeah, in terms I, of what I, they I, called I, it. But. I remember that they were saying that there's never been a diagnosis like that ever before or since. 
Um, right, if okay. I'm if I'm correct with okay. that, that's interesting. Which is an interesting one. Yeah, they, definitely. They, yeah, they had to find a new diagnosis for a psychotic epilepsy. Well, I believe that was the term. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up again. But I remember it was something along those sort of lines because, they, they, from what I understand, they can't exist together. Right. Okay. There's a lot of it's psychosis. Sort of like, it's like one or the other type thing. Yeah. There's a lot of psychosis yeah. that people that have been. Um, ascribed of demon mm. possession, yeah, yeah, suffer, yeah, yeah. Um, as well as uh, things like schizophrenia, where you're hearing voices and, yeah. and stuff like this. Yeah, um, I've got a lot of that for for next time. Like, the actual, yeah, it kind of like, comes the, up a little the, bit. The, in sort this of book. the medical reasoning behind it, or the the where they try to rationalise mm. what these sort of people go through from a medical, you know, sort of standpoint. Um, but yeah, I didn't in in this case in particular, I didn't specifically read what they'd um, sort of diagnosed it with, other than. D- depression, schizophrenia, and then the uh, temporal lobe epilepsy, which basically mm. just was the thing that brought on the uh, the seizures. Um, gotcha. Now this, <laughs> now you can imagine what I thought when I read this next bit. Yeah, go on in. <laughs> He's shaking his head already. Dear old Lord. Um, <laughs> now the defence would play tapes as evidence um, oh. that were taken during the exorcism sessions uh, themselves. They would show what sounded like demons arguing, so there'd be a back and forth in a, a voice of some description. Now, to assert their claim that their daughter was possessed, the parents said <laughs> that the demons identified themselves as Lucifer, uh-huh. Cain, uh-huh. Judas, um, Belial, Legion, Hitler, <laughs> and, uh, and Nero, yeah. the Roman emperor. Yep. <laughs> and you think, fuck off. <laughs> Dear oh Lord. <laughs> uh, well, I, I mean, I'd got through all this and then I read that and I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, I've just wasted my time reading this whole shit. No, no, not at all. <laughs> but um, yeah, so yes, yeah, so they, they claim that, yeah, so Lucifer himself, Cain, mm-hmm. from, obviously from Cain and Abel. Yep. Judas, who Judas, you know, yep. betrayed the big guy. Um, and yeah, and Hitler and yeah, Nero. <laughs> so Adolf Hitler and Nero. Yeah. Dear old Lord, yeah. So, um, yeah, so that was their, well, that, that was the their defence. This is the thing, right? <laughs> okay, so this is where I want to interject a little bit. If you do believe in the possibility of demons and such, by their nature, they're going to mm. lie. By their nature, they're yeah. going to lie. They're going to tell you that they're Judas. They're going to tell you that they're Lucifer. <laughs> they're going to tell you that they're Adolf Hitler. <laughs> you know, they, and they're, they're going to do these things. They're going to they're going to tell you that they're your uh, an ancestor or something like this to get a way in or something like yeah. that. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I mean, the Hitler one's quite funny. Yeah, really, yeah well, I think did. Yeah, I like, just think why would a, Nero as well? I mean, Nero, yeah. if you why would if you a know, German girl your, be possessed by the spirit of a Roman emperor or? But this is just it, though. If you know anything about oh, I Nero, know. I mean, the geezer was mental and he probably, oh, he was, was, nuts. He probably yeah. was possessed. There's a, a really not well-known story about he wanted to have a frog baby. It was a weird... <laughs> 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 Go check that story Same out because it's batshit crazy. I think you've said all you need to say on that one. <laughs> but the priests put a frog baby in him right. because he wanted to know what it felt like to give birth. Um, right. I mean, the guy was mental anyway. I mean... I was just say, yeah, you're not doing him any favours. Oh, no, like, no, I don't think I need to anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I did look into each um, each individual when I, I sort of, to see whether, yeah, there were cases of um, like possession or even like the belief of it and, and that kind of thing. Obviously, we know, because we've brought him up before, that Hitler obviously had a, a vested interest in all oh, things in kind of supernatural yeah. and the occult and, and whatnot. So that didn't surprise me. The Nero one did, but yeah, was, when you then look into his profile, he was sadistic and he was nuts he and was crazy he was yeah he was off his rocker anyway so yeah lucifer obviously makes sense um judas was an interesting one um and I, again i i started researching this before he came up in in this but yeah it was believed that um like the the disciples and and, and whatnot of uh of jc mm. uh believed that judas was um possessed by a demon because yeah. of his constant portrayal of Jesus. Yeah. Like that he was, was, the, that was the like weak the link thing. for the disciples. And yeah, you, like and that's what they put it down to mm. that. It was demonic possession. Cause it was like, otherwise, why would you keep doing it? Well, that's what thing. That's yeah. why Jesus forgave him. Yeah. Because he said it like, he, he doesn't know. It's not you well, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And he, he said like, he said to God to forgive everyone that 
you know, crucified him, mm. you know, chuck stones at him and all of that, mm. you know, for, for no, not what they do. Yeah. You know, and he, I think he ascribed the same sort of yeah. blessing upon Judas as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, yes, I wasn't, I was kind of surprised, but when they, when you sort of read the explanation, you kind of, yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, mm. that kind of, that kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, the Cain one made sense as well, but it was just the fact that all of them at some point in a you know, conversation were all having a, having a fucking row. Have you listened to the, this. the tapes? No, I haven't. I couldn't, I couldn't find them. It's weird. Yeah. It's really, really weird. The, the voices are distinctive. Right. And some of it is in German <laughs> and some <laughs> well, of yeah. it is in Aramaic as well. well I'd, I'd imagine that to some extent it'll all be in German. Oh, well, to a certain extent. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> no, of course no. you fucking would. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. you know, shut up. No, you know what I fucking mean. Don't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off with that. <laughs> This was, you know, just like as the, we let the bloody world see our video, that's to it, yeah. try that's and make it look like a fucking plonker. Now you know what I mean, <laughs> yeah, I <know>. dickhead. <laughs> God, you walked into that. I'm sorry, I couldn't couldn't resist. Yeah, well, it was all like the, the, the dad's army German. What you know? The, hello, hello. So, <laughs> where are you from? <laughs> Imagine like, are your oh, the voice of Hitler's coming through. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where are your papers? <laughs> voice of Hitler. What is your name? Adolf, is that you? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. Nine. <laughs> but yeah, like I was saying, <laughs> there's Aramaic in there as well. Okay. And I believe there was another language, another uh, much, much older language that was being used. Okay. Yeah, I mean, well, that was one of the things. I think it was uh, Enochian. For some mm, reason, that's, that's come to mind. That's come to mind. They that Enochian has, has come through. It, it was mentioned somewhere in an article that she would... Um, she would claim to have conversations in languages that she claimed to not be able to speak. Mm. So yeah, yeah like, I'm guessing like Aramaic those, and yeah, Nokian. and Nokian and stuff. Yeah. So that would make sense. Although they, I couldn't read anywhere where it specified the different sort of languages. And a lot of it would have been audible anyway, if it was actually demonic or mm. it would have been Latin or something probably. But, um, yeah. but yeah, there was no specific account of what the other languages were, but yeah, there was a claim that, there were some and that mm. she wasn't able to speak them beforehand. Yeah, there are some that... The, I mean, she was only 16 when it all started, so... The, yeah, yeah, it's quite... It, it It's chilling when you listen to yeah. those those recordings. It's mm. chilling. Like, you can hear the, the, the noises that are coming out of her, uh, her yeah. vocal cords, Every mate. guttural and... Oh, yeah. the, the cannibal corpse would be proud. You know, <laughs> right, that, that, yeah. that sort of... The sounds yeah, yeah. that were coming out of her voice was just... Like the pig squealing sort of... Yeah. incredible. Absolutely yeah. incredible. But harrowing at the same time yeah i bet yeah i mean for in preparation for for the next um episode i'm going to be looking at a lot of documentaries about um mm. possessions and and real life accounts and so i'm sure a lot of this is gonna um sort of come up but yeah i'm gonna parasol- specifically look well, i can't get me words out <laughs> parasol- no no <laughs> okay no it's not working today <laughs> no. this ain't working now I've got a whole bloody book to bloody I was going to say yeah you haven't even started yet Christ <laughs> buckle in ladies and gents it's going to be a long one oh, <laughs> I'm so glad this is free you, you might have to listen to this I'm in so two parts I'm so glad we're not pay, like, getting paid <laughs> yeah, exactly to... well that's probably why we probably knew that this whole shit was coming up so. <laughs> <laughs> this whole shit <laughs> yeah exactly oh man um, yeah so yeah so that, that was their kind of defence and that's what they asserted their claim um, to the fact that she, that Anna was possessed on mm. the, the back and forth between these particular figures, which I, I now know and, and kind of knew beforehand that each of them had a kind of a demonic um, or evil um, nature about them, yeah. you know, anyway. So it, it's, yeah, there was only one, I guess, that at the time surprised me, although now it does make sense. That was Nero, um, also the god. Uh, the emperor, sorry, um, but the others. When I re- read through it, I was like, well, "Okay, yeah, it makes sense, makes sense." <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and I thought that was um, interesting and uh, obviously humorous as well. <laughs> um, it's just the, the it's just the. I mean, obviously, what happened to her isn't funny because obviously she was really no, put through not, it, no. like poor thing. Whether it was real or not, it was. Uh, I mean, it was torture for the most part, you know, without putting too fine a point on it you know she was sort of tortured in in many respects mm. um but uh but yeah but that, that, that's what kind of what they rested their case on um but interestingly um almost two years after her initial burial and following the trial 
the parents of Anna Michelle requested that her remains be exhumed. This was because um, they felt that she was buried in a rush beforehand um, and was only put to rest in a cheap coffin. Um, permission was eventually granted on that basis um, and her remains were exhumed and uh, moved into a tin-lined oak coffin um, uh, and reburied. And um, now her sort of gravesite is actually like a pilgrimage for yeah. for a lot of people. Um which I thought, yeah, I, I, I tried to look into the whole tin lined because I thought the reason why they, why have they mentioned that? And so I thought there might have been more to it, but mm. that's actually a standard practice. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, I thought it might have been some sort of like, you know, because tin keeps out demons or you know, or keeps out spirits or something like that. But it, I suppose it, in, in our previous research, iron would be the one well, to do. Yeah. It? Yeah, but it's only because they mentioned it specifically. And I thought, well, why are they mentioned? So I just kind of looked into it. But it just turns out it's just, standard it's just a standard thing to stop the um, stop the smell and oh, that makes liquids sense. and fluids Ooh. and all of that kind yeah. of seeping out. It was introduced over here not that long ago as a as a standard practice for, oh. for burial uh, coffins for for those for obviously ones that are put in the the ground. Obviously, it matters less if you're uh, being cremated. Of course, yeah. But um, not much left afterwards. No, no. But um, yeah. But uh, yeah. So yeah, there, there was, wasn't anything to that. But I thought there might have been. But no. Oh, okay. Red herring. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I thought it was interesting that they did still couldn't let her rest. You know, they still had to. Yeah. Exhume her and. Well, I suppose to, to do a proper burial. I, I get guess. that. Yeah, I get that to a point. But mm. two years down the line, you'd think at that point, and I suppose you know, she's been through enough, better. But from a from a religious point of view as well, she's sort of been made a martyr. As well, like almost like a saint in that respect. She, she had been to to an extent. Yeah, you're right because, like I said earlier, it was from this case uh, and her experience that Germany actually started to restrict the number of um, exorcisms that were allowed be- because of what she mm. kind of went through and and the, the the number of exorcisms that she was subjected to. That actually changed the well, that's, that that's actually changed extreme. the way. Yeah, I mean that was two a week for four hours at a time. To a point where when she died, her knees were broken yeah. from the constant kneeling down and how long she would have been kneeling down and... Bleeding egg. Probably like, you know, thrown down there and, you know, forced into the, you know, position. Because there's pictures of who I can only assume is her, her mother mm. almost having her in a headlock. Yeah. Like holding, like restraining her on the floor, like on her knees, whilst presumably the other chap is the priest in the pictures doing whatever the exorcism riot was. So, yeah, she was put through it, um, bless her. And I think the film done justice to not kind of glamorise it or, I mean, it was obviously Hollywood yeah, eyes and bastardised to an extent. But, oh, absolutely. But yeah. I think they did well to kind of not go too over the top with it. Yeah. Um, especially now I've read the, the actual real story um mm. itself but yeah I'll, if i ever watch it again i'll certainly be watching it in a with fresh eyes in a different sort of light sort of thing yeah, yeah definitely absolutely. which i think i would with any of those films now i've sort of opened my mind up more to all this stuff everything seems like a new a new film now yeah, <laughs> yeah well you still got to watch things like insidious and and stuff I've still like got that, mate yeah. it's i've still got to watch like conjuring in, insidious yeah watch insidious what's the other that's one an interesting um, one. one with uh ethan hawk in it um, sinister sinister yeah i've still got yeah, to watch that one's that, that one's well. a bit more um that one's a bit more spooky in like um without going too much into it mm. it's very very different from like sinister and oh yeah uh, yeah. yeah insidious even and the conjuring very yeah. very different stories, very different sort of yeah, yeah yeah more like but an urban those, legend sort of thing yeah but it was sort of along those lines in terms of like the the horror element and stuff and it's yeah, yeah what i've not um yeah, what I've not seen yet. So yeah, I need to start yeah. creating a list. Of- I suppose it's one of those things that like I don't necessarily hundred percent believe in demon possession and the exorcisms work or or, yeah. or or anything like that. But it's more so I believe in the possibility of it. Yeah, same. Yeah, I only believe in the, the you know, possibility based on what I've read and certain mm. accounts. And I'm sure what you're going to go over. Yeah, um, a few little bits. But it's just, yeah, it's when you start seeing religion injected too much into something, that's when I sort of, wrongly yeah. or rightly, I tend to check out at that point. Yeah, we've I both got a hel- we go. I think we've both got a healthy scepticism of mainstream religion. Yeah. Really. Yeah, I'd you say know, so. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, there's been one too many things that have not exactly gone in their favour. Exactly, um, yeah. And too many things that have 
that have been committed in their name that <laughs> you can't you can't ignore excuse it. or ignore really. No. But yeah, yeah, that's that'll be <laughs> that's a subject for another time. That is a subject <laughs> for another time. But if we are seen as we are on that particular subject, so back yeah. to uh, the dark sacrament, um, it follows about 10 cases of demon possession and um, exorcism in Ireland over the last, I believe around about 50, 60 years, something like that. Oh, wow. Um, And uh, I mean, it's even got, uh, it's even got a review from uh, Lorraine Warren on the back as well. Lorraine Warren, right. Wow. She's had a little uh, little word about it sort of thing. Of course. This book, it came out in 2008. Okay. And um, the first case I'm going to go over is uh, it's a case of ancestral evil uh, or an ancestral sort of possession. Mm. And um, it, it details um, this woman called Heather. Now, Heather had been taking part in a, um, a blessing of a, of a house right. in particular um, in which uh, this canon Lendrum had been performing. She was with two other people, his assistants who often come with him on these various different mm. blessings and, uh, yeah. and, and clearings of, of, of properties and the such. And they'd just about finished doing this blessing and he was wrapping things up, putting away all of these mm. little vials and gadgets and whatever. Exactly, yeah. 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 So like oh, crucifix, <laughs> holy water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. The big crossbow. The big and crossbow. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. The flaming torch. That's the, the one. Yeah. <laughs> he put them all away. <laughs> Silver bullets. Uh, <laughs> and, um, then he stops and he just says that there's a demon in this room and like they did the, the whole, the rest of the house that they did come to just rid the whole house of this one particular earthbound spirit. And right. to his mind, it has all gone to plan. Right. Um, it already, like I said, removed all the, all the extra bits and pieces and started putting the, the stuff in his bags and everything. And then he heard a low, menacing growl come from the couch behind him and it was actually this heather and she had just performed uh, the eucharist so ah she had just done like the the taking the the holy yeah the holy body and drinking of the holy mm. blood and everything else like this and now she had hideously transformed yeah her neck seemed to be impossibly elongated the facial skin had tightened and her lips had drawn back into a mocking smirk. The eyes fixed on him with blazing hatred and they were no longer the eyes of Heather. Now, this was in 1992 and uh, William Lendrum, the canon, he was then age 68, had gone to, he'd been part of um, the exorcisms for several decades at this point. So, he knew the signs and everything. Now, he was he belonged to the um, Anglican Church, which is much like the Catholic Church, and it has strict protocols surrounding exorcisms and the such. And the a minister is obliged to alert his bishop when. <laughs> I'm glad you did it. So we'll have to alert our bishop sometimes. Yeah, we've got to alert our bishop before proceeding sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that you do. <laughs> Morning, mate. <laughs> Morning, mate. <laughs> You're right down there. <laughs> wakey, wakey. Do you know what, what, what you just said then is exactly why I'm going to cut Oscar Isaac some slack. <laughs> That fucking Moon Knight accent. Morning, mate. Morning, mate. You are. Right. You are. Right. Yeah, yeah, top. Yeah, nice. Gonna mate. wake up. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know where I went last night. Oh, blimey, what happened there? Oh. I don't know what. I can't remember nothing. Wow, who took the jam out of your donut? <laughs> <laughs> cool, blimey. Oh. Who put fifty pence in you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we digress. <laughs> yes, we do. We do digress. Sorry. So, um, yeah, the the general protocol is to you know contact the church and to say, look, this is what's needed. This is what's just happened. This yeah. is what's just happened. We've got to do. Th-. So he actually jumped the gun a little bit, and he he there was neither time nor opportunity to actually contact them. Right. So, like his two assistants were sitting there calmly, and they were a bit confused by what he said, mm. and. Heather mm. as well doing what she's doing. Yeah. Um, so he said, "We need to we need to perform an exorcism. There's a there's a demon in the room, and 
they were both shocked and unawares as to exactly what was going on. So, but they did recognize the behavior from a prior case. So right. what had happened was that Heather suddenly lunged at her partner, Joe. Oh. So I, like he looked absolutely terrified and like with tweak, two quick gestures, he, like, he was motioned back to the back of the room, told to keep quiet, mm. stay out of harm's way. And this is when um, Lundrum, Lendrum, sorry, then said, you foul and evil spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And then Heather, this voice came out of Heather's, Heather's throat and it was, you'll never get rid of me. And the woman slithered off the couch, cackling and taunting. She's mine, 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 mine. This voice coming out of her. Oh dear. And it was that of an old woman that was coming out of her throat. And oh, it right. wasn't just coming. It, this was the thing. This was the, something that not just um, Lendrum, but also his other assistants and Joe, her partner. Said, yeah. It wasn't just coming from her. It's like it was coming from around them. This voice, it was like, right. it was almost like in stereo for him. Mm. And she was writhing on the floor, her body coiling and uncoiling itself, her tongue lolling obscenely, as it says here. Yeah. Um, again. I can I imagine that? <laughs> again, it reminds me of Scary Movie yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point... That's when he realised, okay, yeah, these, I've seen this before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In me, in me two decades of doing this, um, yeah, yeah. Um, we need to we need to start performing it. So he 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 mentioned he, he motions his two assistants over to her to hold her down, and this time the cannon was determined not to be thwarted because the last time that he saw this in another mm. case, um, the guy that was suffering with this demon possession mm. actually he ended up jumping out the window and running away, never found again. Apparently. Wow. So he took that as a loss, which is fair enough. Yeah. Because I would as well. Yeah. So he was determined that he wasn't going to be like thwarted this time. And he, now he mustered the power, the words of power. So right. this was something that reading through this book, what I gathered was that words aren't just words, you know, because we ascribe um, intention and meaning and context to them, like what I was saying before. Yeah. This is where I think that the words that are being used, it's not just the words, but it's the intention that the, that the priest behind them. or the holy man is, yeah. is putting toward it. Yeah. So you could, you could just say a prayer. They've got to be loaded, haven't they? They've got, they've got to be. You exactly. Know? Yeah. You could just recite the Lord's prayer and it would have yeah. no effect. Yeah. You've got to know what to say and, and how to how say it. It's to in the conviction it as well as yeah. anything else, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So he says, in the accordance with the authority that has been given to the church, I bind you and I forbid you to speak or interfere with this woman. And he placed his hands on Heather on Heather's head and she recoiled from his touch. Within moments, she was on her feet, snarling, snarling. And as he backed away, he, she basically, she jumped up and she bear hugged him. Oh, wow. And she was trying to... Essentially, she was trying to bite him. She was trying to bite him on the neck. Shit, right. Um, and he couldn't believe the, the sort of like energy and the, the sort of strength that she was exhibiting at this point. She was barely five foot tall and uh, he says he weighed a, a perhaps 90 pounds. Um, but her arms and her, and, her, and her fists, just they were that of a much bigger man. Like, mm. I guess like um, Eddie Hall. Or something like yeah. that, giving you a bear rug. It's yeah. just going to absolutely crush you. Um, so the two assistants sprung up and they, they tried to pull her off and they, she basically she just shrugged them off and she knocked them to the floor. Wow. She just had this insane strength about her. And eventually they managed to, to, to pull her off of, off, of Lund, off of Lendrum. Right. And she got an arm free and she socked him. She, yeah, she, wow, wallop, have that. Um, and he, he said he felt that blow and it nearly took his jaw off um, and he struggled to retain his, his balance. Mm. And, and probably composure as well after that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He'd just been smacked in the face. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It doesn't matter if she's about five foot. If she's exhibiting that sort yeah. of strength. If she's put all that power behind it, you're going to know about it. <laughs> well, if that's the case, he's got a pretty good jaw. Yeah, yeah well, at least well he can sir. take a punch. Yeah, well, that's, that's 68 <laughs> years old. Well done, sir. <laughs> he's Irish. 
So, ah, uh, well, there you go. Yeah, then. He's an Irish priest, so yeah, he's been through it. <laughs> he's been through a few <laughs> yeah. fights in his time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so that at this point, that's when he says, uh, in the name of Jesus, stop. And as he shouted the stop, Heather fell to the floor as if she was struck by a heavy object. Mm. And as she lay, she lay still as a stone, eyes wide open, all the strength seemingly completely drained out of her. Yeah. And L- Lendrum, he was still a bit groggy and everything. He was just like, right, okay, let's regain myself in a little bit. Yeah. And that's when he, right, okay, let's continue. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to re- release your name. Because once you've got the name of the demon, you've got power over it. Yeah. According to how they believe it actually goes down. And upon hearing the word Jesus Christ, Heather went into a violent spasm. And the two assistants. That's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so That's she started pretty... going into the, the, the seizure sort of thing. Right, yeah. So the assistants grabbed her arms and her legs and they tried to hold her down because she could be a danger, not just to, to everyone around her, but to herself as well. Um, and that's when he went back and he, he got his cross out and got the holy book out as well. Yeah. And Heather seemed to like slump into herself the moment that he started reciting some of the prayers. And her posture came over of an old, decrepit woman. And the shoulders grew like hunched. Her, her chin sank low into her chest. She began to cackle. And she said, she's mine. She's always been mine. You can't have her. Never, never, never. Jesus, right. And I command you, he says, in the name of Jesus, give me your name. Damn you. This voice came out of her. I command you, in the name of Jesus Christ, give me your name. And she goes, damn you, damn you, damn you. And then she spat at him in the face. Lovely. Mm, Lovely girl. Um, She never belonged to him. She's ours. We serve the master. Before the sperm met the egg, she was ours. Wow. (laughs) What fucking hell. (laughs) Wowzers. Yeah. Yeah. Before the filth met the filth, she was ours. In the darkness of the womb, she was ours. In the depth of the garden, she was ours. Always ours. Always ours. And the demon was basically playing for time. This is so... Like delayed tactic. Yeah. On Lundrum's experience, this is the demon... You know, the words of power are actually starting to have an effect because it's it's stalling. Right. You know, it's, it's chatting just to, you know, keep yourself yeah. going a little bit longer. And he recognised this gibberish. And so he, he pressed forward. I command you to give me your name. And Heather's body started contorting. And she started uh, she started stuttering. And she said, Sal, 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 Salisha, 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 Salisha. She kept saying that over and over and over. So now he's got the name of the demon. Right. And at a signal from from Lundrum, his assistants went to lift her back onto the couch, but found that she was, they couldn't move her. She was like granite. They couldn't move her. Bearing in mind, she wow. only weighs 90 pounds. Yeah. So that's not heavy at all. No, it's nothing, no. Nothing at all. And they couldn't move her. And it was almost like an uns, unseen force was was holding her in place. Right. She couldn't move. So he commands, he commands again, the vile spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, leave this woman. And then this is when he really, really starts going on to it because at this point she uncurled herself and lay flat on her back, eyes open, staring at the ceiling, just making these weird guttural noises. Yeah. Again, something out of Cannibal oh. Corpse. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, God knows how Joe felt about it, seeing all that crack on. Yeah, exactly. Um he says, you vile spirit, I'm speaking to you now in the name and with the authority of Jesus Christ. At my command, you will depart from this woman whom you've tormented for many days and nights and you will go from go to your place. And then suddenly she shot up like the undertaker. So it was like, <laughs> boom. Dong. Yeah, like she, <laughs> sitting straight up yeah. like this. Like an, an invisible hand had just yanked her up and... Her head started like lolloping side to side in sort of like a weaving motion. She was smiling and drooling. Like, I mean, that's that's an image for you right there. Sod that, yeah. It's one thing to kind of believe it or not. And like I said, I believe in the possibility. But if you're in a room with someone and you're looking at that and you're thinking, 
Like, fuck that this. Ain't, that ain't half con- yeah, that ain't half convincing. <laughs> fuck this. <laughs> like you're on your own. No father. This bye way. bye. Bye bye now. Fuck this. <laughs> yeah. This is where I fuck you off e poor for four. Yeah, 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 really, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then it says, We will never leave her. We will kill her first. We tried her and then and a new voice came through at this point. When he said we'll we'll kill her first, for her first, and it was an, a more masculine voice that's coming through. Sorry, this is uh, Stephen. Sorry, Stephen, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what this other guy's doing. Like, uh, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> who are you? This is terribly uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. We said a masculine voice. There's, didn't no, we? there's no room for two of us in here. <laughs> Where am I going to go? Where am I gonna go? <laughs> Hello, mum. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Terrible day. <laughs> oh, fuck it up. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So accurate. <laughs> <laughs> you had to say it last time, didn't you? The thing is, it seems I know, sorry. more likely. Sorry. But yeah, so this new masculine voice yeah. has come through now and it's saying, we will kill her first. And it sort of takes on like a weird sort of mocking sing song, like cadence to the voice. And it says, right. we, tried, we tried her before with blood and pills, blood, uh, blades and pills, blades and pills. We tried her again with blades and pills. And he said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, release your name. And then she sneered at him. And his face was just completely unrecognisable. This was not Heather sitting there. Right. And it, another personality, another consciousness comes through. And he says, I am Uncle Seth. So I apologise now for any Seths that are out there. <laughs> The lover of little ones, robber of little souls, killer of innocence. Top bloke. Yeah. So Salt if the there earth. are any Seths out there that are uncles, I do apologise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and on the last syllable, her hands flew at her throat and they began to squeeze. And she started turning blue, going, the, the, the eyes bulging. And they couldn't break her grip on her own throat. Again, wow. it was just this... this it was just, she, they couldn't do anything to do to do it. And this was when Joe cried out, can't anyone do something? And the Lendrum actually lost his shit with him and said, like, I told you to be quiet. Mm. Do not say anything until you're spoken to. And certainly not by this, mm. this thing here, mm. which was referring to his fiance, mm. Heather. Yeah. Um, and he said again, I command you in the name of Jesus to depart from this woman. I've bound you and stripped you of your power and resist... And Heather's, Heather's head began to weave from side to side again. And we take them in the dark, always in the dark, in the depths of the dark. We walk for the master in the dark. So again, this is referring to when demons come. Yeah. It's at dark. For some reason, they can't, even in artificial light, right. they don't do anything. They can't do anything in the light. Almost it's like a barrier to them. Almost. In yeah, it's very strange. It's interesting. And then he says, you will go quietly and you will hurt no one as you leave. And then again, completely different switch. Now, now they're begging. No, please don't send us to him. We cannot go to him, please. Not to the cold place. We need the warm with the bodies of the warm. We live in the blood of the bodies of the warm. And then it just kept repeating it over and over and over with like this breathless urgency, like of the warm, of the warm. Mm. To do the master in the body, to do for the master in the bodies of the blood of the warm. And he he then commands the, the demon to release her right. from his grip. Yeah, yeah. And as he put his hand on her head, it's, it's, she's, still, she's still muttering, warm, please, we need the warm, please. And then he says, one last time, go now to the place that, jo- that the Lord Jesus Christ has appointed for you. There will be, there you will remain until he releases you, which he obviously he never will. Mm. And then she faints. She's out. And she's out for a good 15 minutes. And then she comes around and says, what am I doing on the floor? She had no wow. idea. No she recollection of... No recollection of what had just happened. Jesus, right. Very much like the South End werewolf. He had no... Had, every time he, something like this happened, like he had like this this bout of 
ferocity, like rage, or yeah. rage. He had no recollection yeah. of what had happened. Almost like he was possessed. Possessed, yeah. Very, very strange. Very, very strange. Yeah, that's weird, man. But this comes from um, she had a long history of it, and it gives a, um, an idea as to her history on where these things come from. So the one thing that was coming up a lot with regards to these demon possessions and exorcisms on the people that were suffering with it mm. was they had a very, very checkered past. So there's right. lots of things like trauma, childhood trauma and um, abuse and... Uh, well, it's probably the sort of mind... Well, it's one of two things. It's probably the sort of mind that they prey on because it's mm. easier to make contact. But it's also the sort of mind that would be easier to communicate with because they're more likely to be susceptible to that kind of mm. like thing. I, I, I won't say too much because I, I, I didn't read the full article, but I read something yeah. along the lines to say that, you know, things like sort of general, like what we would identify as like bad mental health or things like, you know, autism and, and schizophrenia and, and all these sort of disorders mm. aren't actually disorders in a negative sense, which I know they shouldn't be viewed as anyway, Yeah, but it actually just means that they're more in tuned to where like everyone should be. And those yeah. that don't have those disorders or conditions or whatever around it, they're, they've created the stigma, but it's actually those of us that don't suffer with those things that are, you know, less in tune with, you know, kind of, you know, the earth and the energies Certainly. and whatever, but there are, yeah, there are certain conditions that yeah. are actually, more susceptible for that reason because you're more in tune and you're more open to that yeah. kind of energy and stuff, which is more why... More so with, like, uh, schizophrenia <clears throat> and psychosis and, and, and those sort of things that um, I've read many articles and many books with regards to the um, the connection between schizophrenia and, um, say, like a spiritual path. Yeah. There's a lot of cases where people that have attempted to go on a, uh, a spiritual discovery yeah. have eventually become somewhat of a shaman in yeah. what they discover about themselves because they are able, according to the more, and I'll put this in inverted commas, primitive cultures, yeah. they say that those that can that do suffer with schizophrenia are closer to the veil between the two worlds. The two worlds, yeah, that, that's what and I'm trying to get at. they can listen yeah. to the spirits and they can, they what can hear what yeah. they're saying and they can... Well, when it's that whole thing that, like, you know, with people with things like schizophrenia, for example, you know, a, you know, clusters, you know, in, mentally insane or you know, whatever, because you know they're hearing voices. Mm. So, well, they're not just hearing voices. The belief is the voices are actually there. They yeah. are actually hearing people or things surely, talk and communicate. Surely, to them. there's a possibility. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. So the, yeah. I, I mean, I'll I'll read it sort of properly maybe for, for next time. But yeah, that was just like a little tidbit of what mm. I'd read, which I think kind of lends itself to what you were just saying about, you know, what these spirits and demons would kind of prey on is those minds that they know are going to be more susceptible, easier to possess, easier to communicate with because they're already in tune or, you know, in line with the, the right energies, mm. um, you know, well, and, and atmospheres, I guess, around absolutely, them. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the, in, in the case of Heather in particular, she... From a young from a young childhood, I mean, she was um, her mother gave birth to her when she was just seventeen. Um, wow! And her dad was um, a violent drunk and basically a failure. Uh, everything that he did, right. um, and therefore, you know, he'd come home and he'd take it out on the wife. Yeah. And then eventually, he started taking it out on the kid. Okay. Because essentially, what happened was he became jealous. He became jealous of of Heather. Um, In what sense? Well, because she was now the new thing that was getting affection off of his wife. Oh, and not him. Yeah. Right, okay. So she was taking care of the child rather than taking care of him. So yeah, he started, okay. you know... Taking it out on the kid. Taking it out on yeah, the kid yeah. as well. Okay. Now, because of the, the sort of abuse that her mum was actually subject to, she would spend lengthy times in like various different institutions, mental mm. asylums and and the thing, just to, just to recover yeah. from the everyday abuse that was going on. And she ended up having two more kids with this guy, um, right. which obviously did not help anything. Well, no, if anything, it would, it would increase the problem. Exactly, yeah. Threefold. <laughs> well, eventually what would happen was, I believe at around about the age of five, her dad actually died in a car accident. Um, and basically that, that meant that 
her mum was was free of him and she could do she could live again mm. so what she did was she left the kids with her mum and went off to England to find work okay. I get it to a certain degree mm. because yeah. welfare and everything else like yeah, that yeah. you know you, you still needed to go and earn money mm. and you had no one in, in the house and where, where were money. these based sorry this is in Ireland uh, Ireland of course it was yeah sorry yeah, yeah Ireland so it wasn't that far then. So for some reason I was thinking it was the other side of the world and she just up sticks and came to England. <laughs> I'm going to England. Yeah. That's it. I'm off. Yeah. Um, and so she actually left the kids with Nan Sal. Right. Um, Nan Sal, she, she lived in um, a dilapidated cottage just on the outskirts of town. Um, and it wasn't exactly the best of environments for children to, to grow up in, you know, with right. ceilings falling down, plaster, you know, yeah. peeling off damp everywhere. And of course, yeah. Like, the, she wasn't exactly living in any sort of comfort, um, and neither were the kids. And we don't really know too much about the uh, relationship that she had with Heather in particular. Right. But we do know that she actually developed a strong bond with her, but it wasn't a healthy one. It wasn't a healthy loving bond, but it was something altogether more sinister. And what I believe that they're referring to here, because they don't really say it, they're referring to witchcraft. Right. That's what I believe that they're referring to. Okay. So because this, this book is heavy with Catholicism, mm. I believe that, you know, Nan Sal may have actually been teaching her the old ways. Right, okay. You know, what would it be an island yeah, yeah. and all that? Of course, yeah. Um, unfortunately, Nan Sal did... She died in 1978 after five years of having the grandchildren with her. Right. And that meant that Heather's mum had to come back. And she came back with another man. And it was her stepfather. And her stepfather was named Seth. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> now, according to, to Heather, her new stepfather who called himself Uncle Seth, was a serial abuser of all three of the children. And he abused alcohol, drugs, and was frequent, really frequently in trouble with the law. And eventually her two brothers also became that way as well. Oh, right. Um, they ended up spending lengthy times in prison. She suffered prolonged periods of depression and required hospitalisation as well. Um and it was actually in the hospital that she was receiving treatment for that she met Joe, who would later right. become her fiance. Husband, yeah, or fiance, yeah. And I mean, it's a great place to meet your, your you know, your future yeah, wife. Psych ward, yeah. Great place. Yeah. Um, good, good choices. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It happened to be that his sister was there. Right. Um, so their children are shattered because there's history in both sides. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so. Bless them. Um, at the, the, two years later, yeah. she's she's not had any issues for two years because she's found this guy that is so different from her dad and her stepdad. He actually cares. He's not abu abusive or anything like that. He's there for her as well, you know. Yeah. So life, she's on cloud nine basically at this point. So everything's just getting better. Yeah. And this one night, Joe was not at home because he often worked nights, and she woke up all of a sudden. Close to three in the morning mm. and in right. February. So it's going to be hours before it's even light. Yeah. And she woke up to this odd feeling. And as she looked at the, the her alarm clock, looked up and noticed at the, st at the foot of her bed that her nan, her nan Sal was standing at the foot of the bed. And she was like, whoa, 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 hang on a second. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm hallucinating here. And her grandmother was wearing what can be described as a, a pale nightgown. And it was a long, flowing garment with like frilled uh, neckline yeah. and, and cuffs. And she was wearing a ring as well. A ring that she always wore. Yeah. So she kind of like pieced it all together and was like, Nan's like, what, what, what are you doing? What are you, what are you here for? And thinking that actually it was just dispersed and it was just a hallucination that yeah, she was yeah. having. And it spoke back to her and it said, Heather, you'll be with me soon. And then she took her hands and raised them up to her throat in a strangling motion. And at that point, 
Heather lost her shit. We're like, what the fuck? Oh, what the fuck is that? Like, I got up, run out of the bedroom, scared to turn on all the lights and everything. I was thinking that she was going mental again. Yeah. That she was losing her stuff again. And she, it was three in the morning. She's not going to call anyone because they would come and lock her up. The white coats would come along and they'd lock her up again. And she didn't want that. Not at all. Well, so the, 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 the orderlies not, or doctors or whoever. Oh, she was not. out by this point. Oh, she was out by this she point. She was out by oh, this gotcha, point. Right, yeah, so okay. this was two years after that they had initially met. Ah, she moved okay. in with, with Joe. Right, right, fine. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So then she would have thought, is it all creeping back and whatever? Exactly. Right, she okay, doesn't want to go back there. She doesn't yeah. want to go back. Okay, I get it. And so she did the only thing that she could really do is and stayed awake, um, tried to keep calm. She watched some television, drank some tea, lots of chamomile tea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep yeah. herself nice and calm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then she called her mum and um, she got exactly the, the response she was expecting from her mum. You know, after, you know, in the morning when everyone's up. Oh, you were just dreaming. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. He goes, well, you know. I am <laughs> worried. Yeah, I am yeah. worried. Did you hear because, me? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning, mum, yeah. and I saw Nan at the foot of my bed. She was wearing this blue gown of, like, some sort. Um, and she always, and she was wearing that ring that she always had. And that's when her mum went, Mm, I might as well be honest with you. Um, yeah, we we buried her in that nightgown, um, and the ring went with her as well. And then, like Heather, after hearing this, was like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna die!" Like yeah, she's yeah, just yeah. like straight up, "I'm gonna die." What yeah, the, yeah. What are we gonna do? Then her mum, don't be such a fucking idiot, and then hung up. That was it. <laughs> Cheers, mum. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that's probably what I would say. Yeah, that, yeah. I was going to say, don't be such a fucking <laughs> idiot. Such a fucking idiot, were you? Yeah. Get to turn, bed. Uh, turn off the waterworks, were you? Ain't helping anyone. <laughs> 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 so she's now beside herself because, like, her mum don't care. Like, clearly, her mum's never cared, but her mum don't care, and she's beside herself. She's on the floor. She's weeping. She's she's looking at the carpet. She's thinking, how dirty is this carpet? I can't believe how dirty this carpet is <laughs> and everything. Is there anyone else might get that reference? Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you are. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> but is there someone else might get that, get that reference. Um, and then she hears a man's voice. It just starts off as a whisper. Right. And it's in her ear. So it's not in her head. She can hear it external to herself. And it says, the blades are in the bathroom, Heather. The blades are in the bathroom, Heather. Go and do it now. You know it makes sense. And this made her go rigid because she'd heard this voice before Mm. and it repeated, the blades are in the bathroom, Heather. Go and do it now. The blades are in the bathroom. The blades are in the bathroom. Go and do it. Deal. And so she's screaming in her head, like she's clamping her hands over her ears because she doesn't want to hear it. it. And now it's inside her head. So she's no, she's no longer hearing it audibly. She's now hearing it inside her head. And it's, do it now, do it now. The blades are in the bathroom, Heather. The blades are in the bathroom. Go and do it now. Now, now, you know it makes sense. And she knew this was the voice of a particular person. And it had the strong smell of nicotine started filling mm. the air. And her uncle Seth would say, it makes sense. You know it makes sense. As one of the things he would say, basically, right. to keep her quiet. Yeah, yeah. So it's this old trauma suddenly coming back yeah. to her. Now, the question I want to ask is, is it Sal? Like, a Salasha? A Salisha? Or I can't remember how to, how to pronounce it. Her nan. Was it her nan that's possessing her? And was it Uncle Seth possessing her? Or was it demons posing yeah. as them or to get away in? Or Third is it option, option is it bollocks? No, <laughs> no, no is it? Is it uh, no, that's the fourth option. That's the fourth option. Is, um, is, it, is it just that, that kind of pent up psych- psychological trauma from, you know, the abusive upbringing, you know, the, 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 the poverty, the, you know, the abuse, the, mm. you know, moving from house to house and, you know, everything. Is it, is it just kind of that pent up kind of emotion, um, that's that's kind of affected her mentally because we already know she's been in a you know institution for a you know period. Yeah. So is it just that trauma manifesting itself in in the guise of schizophrenia? These, yeah, exactly. That's what's going to lead on to yeah in, in the guise of you know 
schizophrenia, yeah. Mm. So not actually like demon, demon possession, but she's correct. She's, yeah, exactly. But she's manifesting these, you know, and was the, 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 when she needed to be, uh, cause presumably this all came out after the, uh, exorcism. Well, this, yeah, presumably this, this was, so, um, this was, uh, yeah, this, so this is actually her account of mm. the things that, so this was like the first of quite a few, um, right. Encounters that she had of this, this sort. Um, before they with the same demons or seemingly so right okay seemingly so there's the same two in same particular two, right I'm it guessing because w- wouldn't leave her alone well yeah I mean I'm guessing that the the grandmother was seen as the more kind of calming you know supportive um, presence mm. and then the, the uncle was the the abuser and you know the the not so calming or, or nice influence yeah so it goes back to the, that whole thing about the duality. Yeah, the you know the angel and the devil on her shoulder, and so was it just her, you know, her trauma manifesting itself into those two people because they were the two that probably meant the most, you know, to her in those formative years mm. because her mum had swanned off to uh, to England, um, yeah. you know. So was it, you know, so was it that? So is there something that can be said from a, me- a medical standpoint that does lend itself to the whole idea that it is just a deep uh, sort of um, uncontrolled trauma that just messes you up so much that you manifest these well these kind of things and because back in the day people mm. wouldn't have understood it i.e people in you know kind of the, the the church and whatnot yeah wouldn't have understood it as a medical condition and would have just gone to the first thing that they can personally recognize it as yeah and then attach it because it's evil and it's horrible and it's not natural then obviously it's got to be evil it's got to be a devil so mm. is it just, th- th- and that's the thing, because it's not just this that, you know, gets attached to things like the devil and evil and it, that's the devil's work and, and that kind of thing. So th- 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 has it just stemmed from kind of misinterpretation and yeah, I think uneducated, and I mean in a medical sense, uneducated yeah, no, sort of ab- yeah. opinions? That that's kind of well. It, it seems to be that there's because that, that seems the more likely, I think, than it actually being a yeah. A sp- well, I, I, from what I, if I remember rightly, I think it was William Harvey in 16, 1628, He um, discovered the circulation of blood, mm. so realised that actually that the, the the forms in which blood actually flows around the body. He discovered that in sixteen twenty twenty eight, right. and at the time, various different ailments were prescribed as being a spirit attachment or a demon possession or, mm. you know, you've got like that, that monkey on your shoulder sort of thing, Yeah, you know, that you can't quite get rid of. And once you alleviate yourself of it, then you're good to go. Yeah. So in a lot of cases, okay. and they believe that there's always been this, um, this belief that the, the blood is sacred as well. Right. So one of the standard practices, certainly within the middle ages was bloodletting and things like this. So there's lots of, um, uh, historical evidence of monks performing bloodletting in order right. to cleanse themselves of evil thoughts or, or uh, right. unpious opinions and stuff like this. The um, whole like lashings thing is like a punishment. A penance like, sort of yeah, thing, but like a, thing. a less in, a less invasive version yeah, of it. Of, yeah, yeah. You know, so, you know, you can either get a couple of whips across the back or... yeah. In do a bit of bloodletting, yeah. Or you know, for instance, they'd have like they'd have a fever or something like that, so they'd let a bit of blood get rid of it, right? So it's becoming like standard practice. And then going into like the 18th century onto the 19th century, that's when things like the science of psychology really started taking taking hold, mm. and this belief of or <clears throat> even knowledge really of um, the old ways are pretty much completely gone because. Certainly in Europe, by the by the 1650s, mm. the witch trials and and hunts and everything else like that were pretty much over by that point. Um, and well, no, sorry, sorry, they were beginning. In fact, should I say? Well, they're around that sort of time. But anyway, yeah, either or, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. the old beliefs were, yeah, yeah. had already really been wiped out. Yeah, so yeah. you know the the old. The old school herbal medis- like medicinal healing, spiritual healing, and all these sort of things were really taking a proper backburn and being pushed away to the back of the bus. Mm. And more modern medicine and 
um, what's the right term? Material thinking was becoming more prominent. Yeah. So makes sense. Potentially, like the science of psychology, uh, psychi- psychiatry has actually taken over, and our understanding of these various different afflictions, like schizophrenia or various yeah. different psychosis, where you know you're getting visual hallucinations. Mm. Are they yeah. hallucinations, or like what we like what you said before? Mm. Are they something that's maybe a little bit closer to what we see previously? I mean, yeah. One of the things that um, one of the priests in this book actually says is with regards to um, this young lad Gary. I won't really go into his story because of time and such. I don't think I'll be able right. to get it in in the actual oh, time really? scale that we've got here. Yeah, oh, wow, there's, right. There's okay, a fair bit to go on here but i will say one of the the things that comes up in it is in the past religion created a moral code of ethics acceptable modes of behavior in society Mm. now 20 years ago children knew right from wrong today self-interest dominates our thinking and moral criticism is considered old-fashioned so the children are allowed to do whatever they please and therefore have no defense against evil he makes a it's an oldie worldie sort of yeah Point of kind view. of valid though it's so, kind of valid yeah. um how else do you explain the rise in binge drinking drug addiction teenage pregnancy and violent crime you could argue that a lot of that was happening that was happening anyway 100 yeah. years ago 200 yeah. years ago anyway you know you yeah. walk through the streets of london 200 years ago and yeah everyone was doing it <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly more, more more prominent i guess yeah but you know prominence yeah. of poverty yeah and such. exactly yeah um and he goes, oh, the devil has very clever, is very clever in his methods. By making God look archaic and out, outmoded, he creates a vacuum in, in the lives of the susceptible in which the enemy can move in to fulfill. Now that got me thinking yeah. about that book that I was reading a while ago, and I, remember, I piped on about it a fair old bit before. Yeah. And it was um, by Dr. Lisa Miller. Mm. And it examined the um, the correlation or potential correlation, should I say, between spirituality mm. and resistance to depression. And it, it was like a three-generation um, three study over, I believe, something like 20 years in which they, they examined um, three generations from each family and how religious or spiritual that they were. And then they they did various different CAT scans and they found that there was a correlation there that the more spiritual you are, the more guarded you are against things like depression. Mm. So potentially maybe depression is within that same sort of guise of mental health issues. Yeah. That may be a misdiagnosis if you were to look at it from a more archaic mind. Archaic, not meaning like, yeah old and outdated but no, certainly a much yeah. older way of thinking older way of thinking yeah no and that's kind of what i was alluding to when i was saying about the the whole kind of like mental health thing mm. it was exactly that it was like you know the depression and the anxiety and, and that type of thing is the you know is the feeling of anxiety actually because of something else something else you're in tune to that's mm. trying to communicate anyone that and has you and you, but you don't know how to interpret it or you don't know what it is that's creating this feeling so you instantly as is in our nature mm. is to go to you know kind of the negative but is yeah. actually in fact something else that's maybe less so Absolutely. so that's what i was trying to allude to earlier yeah i mean for anyone that has um suffered with depression like myself yeah um and me yeah yeah, you, yeah, yeah. yourself as well um i've had that little voice in the back of my head i've had that little oh, voice God, yeah. in, in the back of my head there's this and I've, I've had moments where i've gone where the hell did that come from yeah yeah, I've had that. You know, like, yeah, I've had that. I remember walking um, through Smithfield Smithfield Market in London, mm. and I was just finished my job, and I was walking back to the car where I would parked up at the Barbican, mm. and there was a really, really nice Mercedes SL parked up on the side of the road. And I was looking at it, I was thinking, "That's nice. That's really nice." That is. And as I got up close to it, something in the back of my head went spit on the windscreen. <laughs> it's yeah. I was like, "Hey, yeah." <laughs> like, I had one of those moments where like. The hell was that? And it was just, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that was all about. Yeah. But even like previous to that, I've like when I was, you know, at my very lowest, mm. I had those voices. Mm. Maybe not like in the same way that poor old Heather, 
I experienced them. Oh, yeah, never, never to that extent. No. Yeah, never to but that extent. It was extent. always like an idea, like a little something in the yeah. back of your head that goes, oh, just try this. Or like, yeah, yeah. you're nothing, you're nothing. No one wants you around. Oh, my, no my, one wants you around. Just hell, stay yeah, by yourself. Yeah. They've you lived know? in my head rent free, them, them thoughts. Don't yeah. bother calling anyone. They don't want to hear from you. Yeah, exactly. Those, those yeah. sort of things. Oh, I've had all that, yeah. Yeah. And if, if yeah. you were to ascribe to the idea of demonology, mm. then that is exactly what they would do because they want to feed off of that negative emotion, that negative yeah. feeling, and yeah, yeah. they thrive in it. And they're like, they're like a leech, like a parasite. And it yeah. needs to keep, it needs to a certain, to, to a certain extent, keep you alive because it needs to feed off of that, that energy. Yeah. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a weird one. I guess if you, um, you know, if you're open to the, you know, the idea of like, you know, afterlife and, you know, your spirit, leaving the body and, you know, astral projection where it's like a, you know, a, a temporary thing. Mm. Then I think if you buy into the theory of being able to leave your body, whether it be temporary or otherwise, then I guess you've got to be open to the fact that something else can come into it. Yeah. Another spirit or another being can, consul- you know, whilst you vacate, something else takes up the the meat puppet well, this for a is, little while. That, you know? Glad you've actually said that because that's exactly the bit that I was going to go on to next with regards to this. So, this uh, Father Dominic, who's um, referring to this young lad, Gary, he goes on to say, grown-ups have no end of, div- of diversions mm. these days. And at times, I think half of the world only wants diversion. I know this sounds like preaching, <laughs> says the preacher. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> yeah. shit, Sherlock, yeah. <laughs> but I wouldn't be the first priest to say that the devil makes work of idle hands. I see through, I see the truth that, in the rise of drug abuse, alcohol abuse, pornography, and violence, it all starts in diversion, the way to relieve boredom. Children don't have these things. They, they, what they do have is magic. Mm. And they love magic tricks. So you show a boy some magic and the boredom lifts immediately. So what better way to ensnare a little boy than to show him real magic? And in this case, Gary uses a Ouija board. Uh, and continues okay. to use a Ouija board because the voice probably tells not, him. Probably not the type of magic he meant, but yeah. <laughs> no, but. I mean, because I, I wouldn't even. I magic wouldn't even with mess a K with rather than a magic with a C. No, no, no. You no, know. no. Yeah. But yeah, it's. Um, yeah, I mean, that's one thing that I don't think I'd ever. <laughs> Mate, I'd no. around with. <laughs> no, no. Unless unless I really just didn't give a shit and I was just like, yeah, do you know what? Fuck it, I've had enough. I mean, it, you, and I just yourself, did it for shits and gigs. But I mean, even me kind as a of. a skeptic. Well, yeah, skeptic or, you know, a, a previous skeptic. Mm. Even if it's not true and it, it is a load of horseshit. I don't want to be the one to find out. <laughs> I'm quite happy <laughs> yeah. to. I'm quite happy just believing that it is real and it isn't real in equal measure mm. and yeah, in, enjoying watching others do it and reading their accounts and, you know, their stories and what happened to them and all them different things. I certainly don't want to, regardless of whether I think it's rubbish or not, I don't want to mm. mess about of it just because it could be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I don't want to find out. Yeah, exactly. The possibility of it. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, and obviously it's all horror stories. There's never been a, I'm pretty sure there's never been a good, uh, a good story that's come out of yeah. uh, a Ouija board. No. Um, otherwise Hollywood wouldn't make so many uh, movies because <laughs> exactly. of it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, yeah, that's one one side of things I would never partake in. This is something that I've, I've seen a lot with regards to the other podcasts I listen to, mm. articles I read, stories that I read, books and, and, and such, yeah. that there are forms of um, people that have communicated with things through the Ouija boards because basically all it mm. is is it answers your questions but obviously something is answering yeah. for you in this I think I'll do it I think I'll try a seance I, th- I think I think that's a little bit more sort of controlled if you're doing it in the right environment you know with the right people but if you're just like you know mm. free reprobates like you've picked up a Ouija board and you're just fucking about with it then you're asking yeah. for trouble so that's, exactly. that's the bit I wouldn't well there's a standard practice to absolutely everything that you do there yeah. are there are people out there that um, perform witchcraft and they can they can perform a Ouija board with the correct mm. protocols. So you, I don't know them myself, but there are correct protocols to use. Yeah, and I don't know if I'd still risk it though. I don't know because I know it'd be my sod's lawyer. I'd be the one. You'd be, you'd <laughs> I'd be, be the one that get. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be the one they prey on. 
<laughs> right, let's get the tall one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's get lanky bollocks over yeah, there. Be, looks, be like wash easy. pit again, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. Get the, yeah. get the big one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but no, I'm sure. Like you know, like with anything, you know, there are protection, you know, spells and, mm. um, you know, um, other. Oh, I can't think of the bloody word, but yeah, like um, what is the word? Draw a complete blank. Protection. I don't know, but there's like protection spells and, and, and other things that you can, yeah. you know, do in, in any kind of, you know, situation to, you know, protect yourself against certain Wards things. things but like that. Yeah, I just don't know whether they, I mean, some work. I know that some do. I think um, it depends But it on, depends on the strength and the, the, the strength of the protection that you're asking for yeah, and the, the conviction in it and exactly. whether you believe it. If you believe that you're going to be well. protected then I think you're okay. But if you're doing it just as a, oh, fucking please work, then well, even, chances are it's probably not, I, I think. But Even if you're going to take a, a more scientific approach to it. Yeah. I don't know, man. Reality, yeah, I don't reality know. is relative. So what you believe is different from what I believe. So yeah, what you absolutely. experience is different from what I experience. Yeah, absolutely. So you know what? If, if that's what you feel like you need to do and in order to experience the world in which you do mm. do it yeah, you know, yeah, yeah if you feel like you need to put these various different measures in place because mm. you do believe that these things are there yeah they're there they're waiting for you they're trying to get a way in do it yeah as absolutely, long as you're healthy yeah. as long as you're happy mm. you crack on with what you're supposed to do yeah yeah you know oh, absolutely yeah i don't I do, begrudge anyone doing it but i do feel though yeah. that there there does need to be a reevaluation of the science of psychiatry and start seeing yeah. there seems to be a bit of a resurgence in it lately, yeah. and like in the past maybe decade, that, that certain different psychiatrists are actually starting to see things from a metaphysical point of view, mm. and are starting to treat people in a metaphysical point of view. Yeah. So you know you get things like hypnotic regressions and things like this, yeah. where you um, go back to a point in time in which was traumatic, might not have been in this particular time, but may have been from like a past life or yeah. something like that. So that's typically what tends to happen, isn't it? When people do that, from what yeah. I've read, they do end up going back to There's a, a certain amount of bullshit. You have to kind of sift. Oh, through, you have to you sift know, through the nonsense. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah. I think it was, um, I think it was Ricky Gervais, who's a uh, quite a famous atheist yeah. and thinks it is just all utter nonsense, mm. just complete bollocks. Yeah. And he said that he went to, um, or at least he saw some people that were going to a, a past life party. You dress up like the, the person that you was a past life of, and there was three Napoleons there. You know, it's like one of them's lying. <laughs> yeah. like, two of them are lying. lying uh, one of them's right or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's like uh, the pharaohs and all, the, all these yeah, people yeah. like, no. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you can't, you're not. You can't all have been a massive figure in history. You, you could know. have just been. That's quite a funny one, actually, talking about that. Is, um, I, listen in, I listen to Mysterious Universe. Yeah. Um, and they've been going since like 2012. And Aaron, one of the hosts, did a past life regression. And it turns out he was from ancient Egypt, mm. but he wasn't a pharaoh or a queen or anything like that. He was a prostitute. <laughs> what, a male one or a female? No, a female. A fe oh, wow. Yeah. Who, Wowzers. who was getting railed by the, the pharaoh. <laughs> getting railed by the pharaoh. <laughs> and it's like... So if we didn't, didn't pre-pick our episode names, then nothing that would be it. <laughs> Getting railed by a pharaoh. Getting Past railed by life a pharaoh. Regression. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, welcome to our red talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah the red well, table talk. Sorry, yeah, yeah, TED yeah. talk. I thought going to say red table talk then. <laughs> what all that? Jada yeah. Pinkett Smith and Will Smith. Uh, well, that's, that's equally just as full of shit as anything else. I think. But <laughs> conversation for another time. It but no, I mean the, the whole, um, yeah, the whole regression thing. You know, there's definitely stuff. I mean, I've spoken to people you know, personally who have had um, either had the experiences or have retold experiences of like relatives and stuff where they've, you know, they've had a past life regression. They've seen themselves in like, um, where was it? China, I think. Mm. Well, like, so like ancient Asia, you know, that kind of that time and, you know, possibly even like Egypt and places like that. And they, But it's nothing like, oh yeah, I was a, you know, I was a pharaoh or I was a king or it was yeah. just like, oh, I saw myself as, you know, a little girl and, you know, playing was, in the mud. It was yeah, literally playing in the playing in the sand. In you know, in yeah, you know, there was other people there, but I couldn't tell who it was. But I knew that it was me, and but I didn't recognise anyone. You know, yeah. that they were with who was their brother, but it wasn't actually their brother from this life, sort of thing, and mm. all stuff like that. So you know, and when there's a lot of kind of detail and it isn't all arty farty and fantastical, then I think you yeah. can lend 
you know, I mean, it's their truth. The end of the day, you, no one can prove that they're wrong or right. Do you know what I mean? So I'd like to do it, but I'm but, just, I'm just a bit dubious to whoever it is that I'm, who's going to be doing the, the hypnotism, to be honest. Just but that's the thing. I think that if there was a way that you could do it yourself, um, I'd, oh no, my luck! I'd just fall into a, I'd fall into a, a black hole and yeah. get lost. Yeah. I wouldn't be coming back out again. But that's why there, there's a, a slight kind of apprehension with um, like astral projection, because mm. I'd probably be just about strong enough to have the experience and, and leave my body. But it's the getting back bit that um, yeah that's concerning, and whether that that tether is you know it, strong enough. It's um, it's a very emotional experience that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah well, said, I told yeah. you before when yeah. uh, I, I, I was part of a meditation circle for quite a while yeah. and um, had an incredible experience where yeah. I, I essentially started having visions mm. and such and um, cut a long story short, I came to a doorway that was lined in light and I walked through the doorway and I was back in the room mm. that... There must have been about 10 of us, I believe. Yeah. It was all meditating in. Mm. And uh, I looked behind the door, which is where I was sitting, and I saw myself sitting there mm. on the floor. And I was like, I had a double take. I was like, mm. shit, that's me. And as as I realised, yeah. shit, that's me, went bosh. And I just went straight back into my body yeah. again. It was like, it was almost like that realisation of, yeah. shit, where am I? Yeah. I just snapped back into yeah, it. I, know. I mean, there was someone you know, recently that I was talking to that said they did the same thing, but they, all they did was saw themselves laying in bed and they had to, yeah, they would literally just, yeah, like floating above themselves, seeing themselves laying in bed. They were able to kind of like move around their kind of room or whatever. Mm. And it was only because they, I say physically, but they, they had to like jolt themselves kind of back into yeah. like their, their, their body hear, sort of thing. And, and then it was like on half three, tables, it was like three o'clock in the morning or something. I hadn't been Ooh. asleep for long. And they were like, mm, fuck that. And they went and like, just got a coffee and kind of stayed up. I think they did eventually naturally fall asleep again through yeah. the exhaustion. But, but yeah, they, they, and that's happened a number of times to, to like to this person. So really, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, but that's something we can cover in maybe in another episode, like yeah. our body experiences and stuff. So well, if, you, if we're going to do that, you're going to have to watch uh, Insidious. You're definitely gonna have to watch yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You have to watch that. that there's a lot. There's a lot trilogy that, sort of thing. Yeah, there's a lot I need there's to watch. To be films, fair, actually. but yeah, I think there's a fair few because then there's like spin-offs and stuff in there. Yeah. Or is that? No, that might be Conjuring. The I don't Conjuring, know, but, the Conjuring yeah. has like the Anna, uh, the Annabelle spin-off. And the Nun and yeah, all the that. Nun. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, no, the Sin- um, Insidious. Yeah, I think there's four. that one with the little kid. Yeah, who has the thing in the bedroom, standing in the corner, like, and it just points at him or something. I've seen a. Yeah, it's got, Rosie, it's got Rosie Byrne in it. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 I know you mean. Yeah, yeah. But we, uh, but yeah, we, we, we digress do digress again. <laughs> <laughs> New listeners will learn. Yeah, <laughs> they will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They will if you learn. keep coming back, then you know we do that. So <laughs> yeah. it's your own yeah. fault. But, um, but yeah, I guess, I guess in short, I'm kind of, I'm undecided. I don't know. That, <laughs> it's a difficult one, man. I mean, I think when, when I carry on with my research for, you know, what will be the, the next instalment, I mm. guess they'll probably have a better grounding of, of what side of the fence I'd land on. But <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm inclined at the moment to kind of maybe lean on the psychological mm. um, kind of mental health side of it. And that it's just a manifestation of kind of trauma and, you know, maybe past lives, you know, trauma through losing, you know, relatives and, you know, and, and, and kind of that sort of thing. And that's how it kind of manifests in terms of there actually being, you know, demons and spirits and, you know, and they take control, you know, of your body and that kind of thing. I'd, I'd, I'm open to the, like what you were saying earlier, I'm open to mm. the possibility that that is true and that that can happen. Because, you know, as I said, if, you know, if you're open to the fact that you can, you know, leave your body and come back again and that yeah. you are just a soul or an energy, you know, occupying a, a meat puppet then you've got to be open to the fact that if you're if you can go then something else can come in yeah. so they've got to go hand in hand and that's so that's why absolutely i don't know if it, this is it's only because it's i know we're going to be covering it more in another episode but this has probably got to be one of the first if not the first time where i'm actually firmly on the fence I still think, on the fence. I yeah. think I don't know because I. Well, I, we do have this extra episode to go through. Cause, so cause I start talking about you know I think it's more kind of mental health and mm. you know past traumas and and manifestations and stuff. But then as I say that, I then think, 
I do believe in the possibility that it could actually be, you know, demonic, you know, sort of spirits and, you know, and maybe the two go hand in hand. Maybe if you are, you know, have a certain, men, you know, mental, you know, disorder or illness or, you know, whatever it may be, previous traumas, that kind of thing. Does the way we deal with that or is the way we deal with that being open to these mm. other experiences? So when people say that, you know, or even like bipolar, for example, you yeah. know, is is it that, you know, you are you have all these multiple personalities or is is it just past life personalities? So are you Split just kind of, yeah. are you just, you know, relaying back to who you've been in a previous, do you know what I mean? So I, I, yeah. I go all over the shop with- Well, there is with kind certainly of with I, like these extra, like a split personalities and extra personalities, like completely different people. Like they're, yeah, they're yeah. people that have experienced things like nut allergies. So you've got one personality that's got nut allergy, the other mm. personality doesn't. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so when the other personality is taken over, they have no reaction to it and things like this. Yeah. So there's really weird stuff mm. that happens like that. But there's also the concept of a walk-in. So, for instance, when the the the, the, the gate to mm. your body is open, this, this meat vessel, yeah. whatever it is, is open a touch, something can walk in and be part of it. Yeah. And that's the idea of this sp split personality. Mm. Either that or your own consciousness creates it, you know, like the moonlight sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, where uh, moon night even, where that extra personality has been created in order to... Achieve something achieve else that something one else, personality you know, doesn't think it can. To alleviate so, the trauma and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, so it's... But yeah. yeah, so that's, yeah, so that I, I sort of stop going down, off, start jumping off one side of the fence mm. and then I land there and I think, yeah, but no, actually, this could also be, you know, so then I'm firmly back in the middle again. Yeah. So... I don't know. It it could go one of two ways, obviously. Uh, and I'm trying to not let the sceptic creep back in. <laughs> well, there's a certain because I've, I've done scepticism is needed. I've, I've done yeah, I've, I've done pretty pretty well for the last couple of years, I think. Yeah, but have, yeah, yeah, as you say, the, a, a healthy dose of of scepticism, I think, is definitely you know is definitely uh, present here in this you know particular you know topic. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I hope by the end of the next episode, I'll be in a better position to say one way, you know, or, or another, where, you know, where I am. But I'm, mm. I'm I'm open to the possibility of both being a possibility or one leading into the other, like they go hand in hand, mm. you know, type thing that you know one feeds off the other type thing. So, all right, yeah, I don't cool. know. Until next time, children. Until next time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you and good night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that, that, yeah, I'm, I'm. I think I've made my thoughts and feelings on it very clear because I think I've I've ascribed to this mm. way of thinking for quite a while now yeah. that I do believe that there is a there's something outside of what we can experience on a daily basis because we can only experience a very very small spectrum of existence. You know, we yeah. can only smell certain things, we can only taste certain things, hear, mm. see. Yeah, you know, there's so much that we no exists around us but we can't interact with scientifically yeah. yeah yeah so and if we believe in things like you know the the soul yeah. there being a spirit then surely there must be other things that are external to it yeah that would that's want a good it, point yeah if you believe you know, in ghosts and hauntings and yeah ufos and all that kind of thing then i suppose you've got to lend a certain belief to you know to that as well exactly yeah, yeah. so no i'd make you right with that um so yeah, so I guess we will hopefully both be a little bit more, have a little bit more conviction, I guess, in in what we believe regarding this by the end of the next episode. Although see. there's no pressure to, if we're still undecided, then that's the beauty of it as well. And yeah. you know, as always, we invite you guys to yep. give us your stories, your theories, thoughts. You know, any any you know kind of corrections because um, you know we're not always going to get everything uh, <laughs> no, everything right. Really Certainly not. pronunciations as well as uh, <laughs> as a few people have pointed out, but yeah. we um, we hold our hands up to that. So we're, <laughs> we no, we, we never yeah we always we always say beforehand. But um, yeah, I guess that's the um, the end of this uh, episode, which as we've said a number of times is is now part one of uh, mm -hmm. of demonic possessions and the like. Yes, um, and so, yeah, as, uh, we, we actually um, we actually forgot to do it at the start because you, you got carried away. I did, didn't I got you? excited. So, so we, we would like to do our <laughs> thank you to uh, to our um I'll tell patrons. you what, I'll tell you what I'll do. 
I'll have it going across the the screen. <laughs> yeah, we'll you edit the, the video. Very, okay. Whilst we're the video, yeah. you know, post Thomasly, we'll. Uh, we'll so thank now you, you'll yeah. know why that's there. Yeah. Because this dunce <laughs> forgot this to guy. say your names. Yeah, Sorry, guys. So. Um, yeah, so as always, yeah, I'd like to thank our beloved patrons, uh, Justin and James, and uh, and David. Yes, welcome David. aboard, sir. Thank you very much. Glad to um, glad to have you on board. And uh, yeah, again, yeah, just thanks for the the support, um, continued or otherwise, and uh, it is much uh, much appreciated. And uh, yeah, I hope you continue to uh, enjoy what we put out. And uh, if you don't, I'm sure you'll tell us as well. So, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, remember, guys, if anyone would like to, um, you know, support us, then uh, head over to patreon.com forward slash cryptid ramblers uh, podcast. And uh, yeah, we've, um, as you may have seen from our socials, we've actually restructured the uh, Patreon in yes. the last couple of weeks, actually, since the last episode, mm-hmm. um, where we now actually have only the one tier um, that will give you. Um, early access to not only the audio um, episode, but also the video episode as well. Um, and as you've heard, the uh, the, the personal shout out. Um, so uh, yeah, priced at uh, four pounds plus VAT. Um, yeah, we hope that that's- uh, Robin yeah, Bars. And that's exactly right, yeah. Freeloading scum. <laughs> so hopefully- the government, um, not our Patreons, by the way. Exactly, yeah, yeah. The tax man, not you, yeah. not you beautiful people. Um, yeah, so hopefully there'll be enough there to, um, yeah, to, to bring you guys on. But as always, it's not just the financial support that we that we like. It's also the um, the other ways in which you can do it. So the the you know subscribing uh, to you know YouTube, liking our various uh, social pages because we're on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, um, and of course as we've said YouTube. So yeah, just like, share, subscribe, all that usual gubbins that everyone's uh, going <laughs> yeah. on about at the moment <laughs> yeah. but also share your stories you know share your encounters yeah. you know if it's yours or someone that you know and you're happy to share it you know we'll we'll happily share it to you know to everyone else and we'll keep uh, you anonymous if that's what you yeah needed. keep you anonymous if that's what you'd prefer as, as we've done previously and um yeah we'll treat it with um the respect it deserves, although we don't always do it with everyone's. <laughs> but uh, but no, we, you know, in all honesty, we, you know, we will. We certainly try. We certainly try, but no, we will. It's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll treat it, you know, seriously because, you know, obviously some are personal to people and, yeah. and serious and, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, hopefully that's what we've done uh, previously. Um, normally we would shout out our um, merch store, um, but sadly, uh, mm. due to uh, circumstances out of our control, that has been... Uh, taken down um so yeah we won't give the the sort of the links or, or anything um if there are if there have been any sort of previous purchases then i believe there are still being honored mm-hmm. um but anything from this point forward um i mean i don't think the website's actually accessible but uh yeah it won't be transacted i guess from That's what i right. understand so we'll we'll update you guys uh properly in the future as and as and when we know what's uh what's happening we're certainly working on it to get uh, a new merch store up and running yeah, the, with the same designs. Yeah, same designs, but and we've the, also been working on with some the shaved monkey and yeah. the uh, shaved monkey, yeah. <laughs> raging gorgon. <laughs> the raging gorgon. Um, also working on some new designs for season two as well. So um, yes, we'll hopefully have some of those to announce at the same sort of time. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think obviously we know we all now know that we'll be doing a part two. Um, to yeah. this episode, we're going to be going down more of the history to, you know, the belief in, you know, demonic or spiritual possession, um, you know, kind of where it's come from, what regions, what religions, what each, what it means to each of those, although not all of them, because there's over like 400 <laughs> yeah, we'll or something. So that deep into I've it. cherry picked the best ones thus <laughs> far, um, but we also might have some other encounters or stories. Um, I know I said I've got a few documentaries and whatnot to to watch so no doubt i'll share yeah some of those as well because some of them sound pretty cool but again if anyone has one they want to share whether it's yours or someone else's then uh please uh get in touch on any of the uh socials um or email us um cryptid rambler podcast at hotmail.com um and uh send it on over yeah. um but otherwise um <laughs> you, you know what's coming <laughs> yeah yeah but otherwise um, it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from me and remember 
Shake your ass. Watch yourself. <laughs> Shake, Shake your ass. ass. Show, Show me what, what you're, you're working, working with. with. <laughs> <laughs>